Hello everybody. Let's take a look at how uh, selection works in Radian technology. We're going to use Manifold Viewer, the uh, free read-only version of uh, Radian Studio, so uh, anybody can try this at home. Uh, we're going to continue on to with the project where we had, which we uh, worked with earlier, where we uh, used a Manifold Viewer to uh, hunt for Neolithic relics in France. And this is basically that project. Uh, we're going to arrange to have it uh, available on the Manifold website so you can download it and follow along and try it yourself. What we did, if you recall, is uh, we uh, took a, a database of uh, all various uh, Neolithic monuments that exist in France and we extracted from that uh, dolmen. Uh, a dolmen, if you're curious, we can use a manifold viewer to take a look. Let's take a look at what a small dolmen looks like. We'll open up a file because, of course, the viewer can read pretty much anything. And here's a JPEG that we imported that shows a small dolmen, dolmen which is a typical so-called Angevin dolmen that's uh, found in France. So there's a big table rock at the top and some vertical supports. And this thing dates back to five or 6,000 years ago. So we've been hunting those, and here's a little a map of dolmen. And what we did in the example is uh, we uh, copied all of the uh, dolmen that uh, here in the name field have a plus five or so. The guy that created this database uh, coded the uh, relative ranking of each of these domes, that is the relative size or whether they're cool or uncool or whatever, by appending numbers to the name. <coughs> now, everybody who's into database knows that's kind of a crazy way to organize such a system. You really should have that as a separate field. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to extract some of this information, put it into, se into a separate field, and we're going to use the selection capabilities of a viewer and Radiant to do that. We're going to begin by right-clicking and by clicking the star to create a new field called rank. And we're going to make that an integer. Let's make it a 32, kind of overkill, but what the heck. So now we have a field. And now what we'd like to do is we're going to select, edit, using the select uh, dialog, we're going to select all the fields of the, uh, where the name value field contains uh, a 5. You can see, for example, it, it selected one uh, right there. Uh, uh, when Radian works, or viewer works, uh, it previews what it's about to do, so you can see if you decide if, you, if what you did is the right thing or not. So now we're going to click Replace Selection. And now in this uh, table, we have selected all the uh, various fields. We can use page up, page down to scroll through it. We've selected all the records where that contain a 5 in the name field. Great. Now let's uh, populate the rank field, which is currently uh, full of nulls. To do that, we're going to use the transform dialog. We can do this with SQL, of course, but we're going to use transform. We're going to use point and click dialogs. And the target is going to be the rank field, which viewer helpfully tells us is an N32 field. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by copying into this rank field. We can either take the value of some other field, we can write an expression, or it can be a very simple expression, such as a number. We'll start by populating the entire rank field with the value 0. And here it's giving us a preview of what's going to happen. We like that, so we're going to click Update Field. Great. There's now 0 in all the rank fields. Now what we're going to do is we're going to restrict the operation of this dialog to the, res to the selection by clicking this Restrict to Selection field. And now we're going to enter the value 5. Remember, we've selected all the different fields uh, where the, the name contains the number 5, uh, the character 5. So now when we restrict the operation of the transform dialog to the, re to the selection, only those fields, only those records that are selected are going to be modified by the dialog. So we can see that previewed right here. Uh, again, once again, preview is a great way to see what's going to happen before it happens. So let's uh, click Update Field. Great. Now what we'd like to do is let's uh, select all the records uh, which contain, where the text contains number four, and that's in the name field. And that shows a preview. It also shows us what the current selection is right there, but we're, we're now looking at a preview in blue. So let's replace the selection. So now we've selected all those records. What we could do at this point is we could use the transform dialog once again, restricted to selection, to copy the value four into this uh, rank number. And let's see how that would work. Transform. Target is rank. Copy. 
and we put the value four into there. That shows us, uh, oops, got to click restricted selection. So now you can see how that works. Unclick restricted selection, it applies to everything. Click restricted selection, it applies only to selected fields. Very cool. Uh, if we clicked update field, that would instantly update the field. But let's do something which is uh, more interesting. Let's show how uh, Manifold Viewer and Radiant can automatically write SQL that would uh, implement this uh, transform template. What we're working with here when we're working with these various transform templates, and there's hundreds of them, is we're actually uh, talking to the SQL, to the query engine within uh, Manifold Viewer and Radian. And at any time, it's ready to expose what the query is, so we can use that to learn SQL, or we can use it to modify the query that it's proposing to use. So let's click Edit Query. And what it does is it opens a command, command pane here. I'm going to undock that so we can see what it is. And uh, here's the SQL that it created. It's automatically generated. Some of this stuff is just uh, infrastructure. For example, these here are pretty much comments fields. We can get rid of those. We can use them or, or not. We can, let's get rid of those. And uh, the pragma is uh, just launches a progress bar, which is useful useful to have in a, in a query if you're modifying zillions of records and you want a progress bar. We don't need that either. Uh, we can clean this up a bit so that uh, it's not automatically generated by it. Select the MFD field and the rank field and the value for alias as and rank from call. The selection function selects what's selected in the in the uh, drawing. And the threads uh, command is automatically added to all radiant all radian uh, in manifold viewer uh, queries. Uh, Radian is 100% parallel. It always runs parallel. So when you look at something like thread system CPU count, this function here, system CPU count, is uh, returns the number of CPU cores that is in the system. That is the number of CPUs that Windows thinks it has. And thread says use the maximum amount. So if, if there's eight cores in our system, the function system CPU count is going to return the value eight. So threads eight says use all the cores in the system. That's automatic. We can get rid of that if we want because for, for such a tiny query it doesn't really matter whether they're parallel or not. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to uh, make this query a little bit more understandable. There we go. So we're going to update the table and we're going to make these selections from the selection and then we're going to set rank into, in, into end rank. If we click here the go do it button, run button, bang, it automatically executes that query and puts the value 4. That's really what we're doing when we use the uh, transform dialog. And the ability to have the transform dialog automatically uh, write SQL for us that uh, shows what's happening behind the behind the scenes as it were in the uh, transform template is a fantastic way to learn how to use various functions and to get more sophisticated in the use of SQL with both Radiant Studio and Manifold Viewer. Keep in mind this is a free product that we're talking with here and, and, and what you're looking at is one of the most sophisticated uh, uh, spatial SQLs uh, on the planet if not the most sophisticated. Great, so uh, now we have this new rank field and uh, let's proceed to use that. Let's proceed to uh, use that to color and to format, to style the, the visual display. To do that, let's create a map. I'm going to create a Bing Street map called Bing Streets. And we're going to use a web map server that's Bing Street Maps. So create that data source. I'm also going to create a, uh, a satellite image, Bing Sat for satellite. And I'm going to use the Bing Maps satellite web server for that. So now I've created two data sources. Let's create a map which allows us to uh, do layers. So here's the map. It's concurrently empty. We're going to begin by dropping in the satellite dis image display. So there's satellite image coming in from uh, Bing. And here's the street map image display. The street map image display is above the satellite image. I can turn the layer off by double clicking it or turn it on by double clicking it. And now let's drag this Dolman drawing into the display. You can see the Dolman drawing appears using default formatting. So let's style that to take advantage of the new rank field. And let's zoom in a little bit further. So edit style. 
great. The first thing I'm going to do is, uh, hmm, how should we do this? Let's, uh, let's set this, the size of the points. And instead of using a value, I'm going to control it by this field. And the method I'm going to use to control it is uh, unique values, because we don't have too many of those. Tally. And for values of 0, I'm going to make the size of the point 1. For values of uh, 4, that's Dullman that have a 4 in their name, I'm going to make the value of a point size 8. And for big Dullman that uh, have a value of 5 in the name, I'm going to, in the rank, I'm going to change that to, well, let's make it 14. Let's see how that works out. So we'll, we'll apply. And you can see how that changes things. Let's also uh, give us some visual distinction by uh, changing the uh, symbol that we use based on the rank. Again, I want to emphasize that Manful Viewer and uh, Radiant Studio are a database tool. They're not a GIS, even though people often use them for GIS things as we're currently using them. So let's tally and uh, let's see. For four, we're going to make these uh, that, uh, an icon like that. And for that, we're going to make that. So let's apply. And now, last but not least, let's change the fill color to make it even more visually distinctive. Again, we're going to manipulate that by the field rank and we're going to set it to equal uh, to unique values. We're going to leave the default formatting for uh, all the dolmen except the number four and number five. For the number four dolmen, let's uh, ch change the value of that to a bright green. And for number five dolmen, the really big one, let's make that yellow. Let's apply and there we go. Okay, so here we see uh, a reasonably interesting display and uh, Let's zoom in here. These are the dolmen that we looked at earlier in the previous example where we're hunting Neolithic relics. These are the two that are close together, just to the northwest of Samur. And uh, here's the real big one that we looked at. You can zoom all the way in. And let's take a look at that in the satellite image by clicking off the street map image. Okay, zoom all the way in even further. And that's what a big dolmen looks like from above. If we want to see what a big dolmen actually looks like on the ground level, let's file, import, I have an image here called big dolmen, of course. That's a JPEG. We're going to open it. And uh, where would that be? Here it is, big dolmen image. And that's what a big dolmen, that's what a category 5 dolmen looks like when you're actually uh, standing next to it. Here the table rock is that's taller than the average person. An average person can walk underneath this, underneath in here. Further down here, you'd have to squat. But this is what a dolmen looks like that has these three big table rocks on it. Uh, so that's, uh, I'll click this to undock it, undock it. And let's uh, zoom to fit. So when we're looking at a dolmen like this from above, this is what we're looking at. We're looking at a really giant emissary of Neolithic times. Uh, this particular image is not that dolmen. This particular image is of a large dolmen that's located near Tour, not far away from this particular one, but it's but it is a different dolmen. Okay, uh, all that is cool. Let's uh, let's zoom around on this image here while we're at it, and take a look at some other things that we can do. Let's uh, zoom into here to Samur. Samur is where the uh, great uh, Angevin fortress of uh, the English Lords is located and here it is. It's a fantastic fortress that's on top of a high bluff overlooking the, the Loire liver, River. We don't see it particularly well in uh, Bing. So let's do something else that's cool about Viewer. Let's uh, use uh, a new data source called this uh, GSAT for Google Satellite. Let's uh, fire up Google Maps Satellite Web Server. Create data source. Now let's drag and drop that into here. Let's see what Google displays. We get a better view of the fortress here. You can see the towers here and you can see the ramp coming up into the fortress uh, in Google than we do in, uh, in Bing. I'll turn off uh, Google Satellite. Oops. Okay, I've got to turn off the street maps image. There we go. Drag and drop my layers around. So here's the uh, Bing satellite image, and let's turn on the Google satellite image. There it is. Turn it off, and you can see the difference in how um, 
uh, Google and uh, Bing. I photographed this region. Bing shows the uh, dolmen a little bit better than Google, but Google shows the fortress better, I think. So there you go. That's a tour of uh, using uh, Manifold Viewer. You can uh, download this uh, Megalith uh, pro video project uh, from the Manifold website. Try it out in Viewer. Viewer is a free product. Uh, you don't need to pay anything for it. It's not crippleware. It's, uh, it is read-only, but nonetheless, you can still use it for uh, very cool activities like you just saw. If you want to actually save this stuff as a new project, uh, then you're going to need uh, Radian. But uh, still, it's nice to have something like this as a uh, viewer to look at all sorts of wonderful things. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.